Hi, I'm Pam and I would like to welcome you to the Live Authentically show. On my show, I talk to people about how they live authentic lives and about how they help others connect to the essence of who they are. I would love to invite you to join my Facebook group where we have a group of like-minded individuals committed to their spiritual growth and transformation. You can find us at liveauthentically.today slash FB. I'm super excited to be launching my first book. It will be out in early 2020, and it's a spiritual journey through my personal growth and transformation and self-actualization. It contains all of the keys that you need to unlock the secrets of the universe so that you can create the reality that you desire. Today, I'm super pumped to have with us Kyle Lipton. Um, he is he does a number of different things. Um, thank you for joining us, Kyle. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Um, Kyle is a spiritual teacher who has a really um, unique approach. Uh, he blends spirituality and comedy in a very unique um, in a very unique way, and I'm super excited to have him tell us about that and everything else he's doing. So. Um, before we jump into some of the questions I have for you and you telling us about your journey, what you do on a daily basis, how you connect to source energy, et cetera, all the amazing questions I have for you. I always right. start the show out with the same question. I ask everyone the same question and it is, what, what does it mean to you to live authentically every day? Uh, I think to have less and less to move towards having less and less separation between who you truly are and how you show up in the world. And what are some things you've learned on your journey? What are some things you've discovered that work well to bridge the gap between those two things? Because those are, those can obviously be pretty, there can be a large disparity between those mm -hmm. two places. And what are some things you do on a daily basis to bridge mm -hmm. that gap? There's so many ways I could answer that question. Um, I would say one is what's helped me and one letting go of people pleasing, not saying I'm perfect, but you know, it's like when you're in that conversation that ended 45 minutes ago, but you're still in that group of people that are talking and you really want to leave. So you're half present there and you haven't left the conversation yet. You know, it's a moment like that where you're like, Hey, you know what guys, I'm ready to go then you leave. Uh -huh. And these sort of little moments where our energy drains on a day-to-day -day basis, where we're talking to someone we don't really want to be talking to, or we're doing something we really don't want to do all because we're trying to please someone. But what's helped me to, to break out of that even more has been realizing that you're never actually pleasing people's true self. And what are you doing? What are you're you? pleasing a facade, you're pleasing uh, an ego construct that actually isn't who they truly are because who they are at a soul level, they want you to honor yourself at a soul level. And when I got to see how it wasn't actually honoring people by staying in those kinds of conversations, it became a lot easier because it's just a mirror being held up to show you where you're not honoring yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, releasing people pleasing more and more has been a big one for me. And what are some barometers that you use to determine if you're pleasing their, their true authentic self or if you're pleasing their ego-based facade? I, I think the main difference just comes down to e how you feel and how, how much you're expressing yourself and how much you're feeling like you're being yourself or even being inspired to be in this conversation. And you know, you could even ask yourself a question, build a, build a, a muscle with it, ask your intuition, just literally say it out loud or not out loud, but literally say it inside. Just be like, am I called to be in this conversation? And then just listen to the answer that comes to you and trusting that and just develop, developing a trust muscle to continue to uh, follow that. And also having compassion with yourself along the journey. Like you're not going to get it all right. It's not going to be all perfect. You're going to mess up. And that's cool too. Right. What would you say to someone who says, you know, I ask for the answer. I ask, should I, should I be in this conversation? Is this where I should be right now? And to that person who is maybe at a different point in their evolution, isn't quite hearing those voices or hearing the answers yet. What type of physiological signs mm -hmm. or barometers could you, um, would you suggest that they start to tune into? Cause I know mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's a long journey of self-discovery and, mm -hmm. and your self-awareness. And what would yeah. you 
someone who's starting out on their journey who isn't who doesn't feel like they they know how to truly connect and, and receive those messages yeah i mean i think a big piece just to even go back on that it's a willingness to hear because god spirit source whatever you want to call it doesn't want you confused so our fear can distort our intuition so we can end up being like um well is this the right answer and it'll be kind of our fear talking to our fear instead of just getting a direct answer because we're in fear because some part of us really doesn't want to know the answer um i mean if we want to go physiology i would say follow what feels more expansive so if leaving the conversation feels more life-giving then leave the conversation if it feels life-giving to be in the conversation be in the conversation or if you're quiet and that feels life draining if it feels life giving to contribute to the conversation and use your voice mm-hmm. trust that so yeah and i would just i would just advise take some time to to just walk around or, or go around your neighborhood and just follow with no map follow with with no agenda and just feel where you want to be led to maybe it's going into a store maybe it's doing that and yeah, I think you'll be surprised at what kind of synchronicities can come if you've never done this before, just from doing something as simple as that. Right. I agree. Just surrendering, surrendering to a higher power, even in this, in the simple day-to-day tasks or, you know, activities such as just taking a walk, just going where your spirit guides you rather than forcing it and planning every step of the way. I, think that's yes. a, I know that's a big key of, you know, that's been a big game changer for me in my personal journey. But this show is not about my personal journey. It's about yours. So I would love to jump into next. Um, I'd love for you to tell our listeners and our viewers about what you do on a daily basis. What do you do in order to help people connect to their true authentic selves? I know you mm. play a huge role in, collecti- or in raising collective consciousness. You do it in a super unique way. Um, and I'm super excited for you um, to share that with everyone. So I'd love to start there. Maybe tell us what you do on a daily basis. And then I would love to hear about your journey, how you, I'm always interested to hear how people, Mm -hmm. you know, came to this point in their journey. So let's start with what do you do? What do you do on a daily basis? In terms of how I help people. Yeah. In terms of how you help people in terms of how you help them connect to who they are, discover the essence of who they are, connect to source energy, how you play a role in raising collective consciousness, all of that. Just a few, you know, a few minor things. Just a little basic question. Just yeah. (laughs) Just, just you, got a few, you, you, you blocked out a few hours, right, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Our we, conversation, yeah. right? <laughs> we got time, bottle of wine, it'll be great. Sounds um, good. All right, dive in. So um, <clears throat> one of the ways that I help people is what I call revealing the cosmic joke. And what that is, is it's showing people the sort of ironic paradoxes that they're running that are actually, and I'll break it down so it's a lot more digestible, but the paradoxes that they're running that aren't actually getting them to the outcome that they want. So for example, let's say someone's trying to people please to get love. Well, what's really happening at an energetic level is they're not loving themselves. So they're people pleasing, which they'll never actually get the outcome of loving themselves through that. But some part of their ego says, no, you will. And then we run that paradigm with the intention of getting love Mm -hmm. but we never actually get the level. I'll I'll give another example. I had a client and she was in a long distance relationship and she had um, a boyfriend who she really wanted to connect to more. And for some reason it just wasn't happening. Like, I don't know if he just didn't want to connect more and it was really frustrating her. And she was trying to control him Mm -hmm. to, for them to connect. And one of the first things that I got her present to was, do you want someone who's, inspired or obligated to connect with you so she got to see that first layer but then uh, it was kind of when we got deeper and deeper into what was going on what she really wanted deep down was his heart but the thing was by her being in control she wasn't showing her heart and she was expecting him to give his okay so uh, with that with that being said she, um, how would I put it? She got to see how it was a mirror being held up and all he was doing was reflecting back her, herself. Okay. And 
kind of the work that I do, it's, it's one of the simple principles is like, you're only ever always interfacing with yourself in other forms. So he's just reflecting back to her herself so that she can come into a more unity consciousness Mm -hmm. and she would have to bite the bullet and she has to go first and showing her heart if that's what she wants in a relationship. Um, So things like that I do, I bring hypnosis into what I do. I bring uh, kind of energy work, energy attunements into what I do with clients. I I honestly, I don't always know how my sessions are going to go, but I know where I'm coming from, which is being a conduit for God's source spirit. And I, I trust what comes, whether that's hypnosis an intuitively guided question, me getting led to share something, me helping someone connect to one of their spirit guides. Like it's, it's very, it's very versatile and it's fun for me because I, I, I never know exactly what's going to happen when mm-hmm. I step into the arena with someone. Right. Right. Um, yeah. And then I also do comedy. I love comedy. So I make comedy videos, um, kind of well, spoofing. Let's talk about that spoofing. a little bit. Cause I think yeah. it's such a unique, I mean, I'm, a, I've always been a big fan of comedy. I've gone to, I've got my favorite, you know, comedians. I go see them live all the time. Um, and I just think it's so cool to blend, um, comedy mm-hmm. and spirituality. I think comedy is something that we can all access. It's something we can all relate to. And, yeah. um, and I think it's a great portal for, connecting to spirituality and understanding spirituality and helping to sort of break down those walls or demystify some yes. of these concepts because this is not this is a very abstract arena that we're talking about spirituality and metaphysical concepts and very esoteric and it's we're used to operating in a 3d world right we're used to you know to operating in a construct of things we can see and feel and touch and hear and um and this is a whole different realm so mm. i think that your approach is absolutely brilliant in using comedy as a portal to help people connect. So I'd love to hear you talk about how you came into that and why, Mm -hmm. um, what, why exactly you use that approach. Well, I mean, the simple answer is because comedy is just like the essence of my soul. So I I couldn't imagine not bringing humor into my day-to-day life. Hmm. You know, I was a voted class clown in high school, so. Oh, you were? Oh, wow, that's yeah, awesome. Was. So it really um, is intrinsic to who you are. It is comedy, a, nothing. It's, comedy's been a very big staple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. So your question was, so how do I, what got me into comedy and how do I bridge that into what and, I do now? Yeah, and just why do you, um, why do you use comedy? Why, you know, why do you use comedy? Right. I think you already alluded to the fact that you know, just being voted class clown, it's, that's a testament to, this is a part of who you are. This is, this is a part yes. of soul that just cannot yes. be extricated. So I think one of the main, you know, what's something that jumps out at me that I see is that this is, this is your authentic self. You are incorporating who you are and yes. your energy signature. This is nothing that's forced. This is, you know, this, it sounds like it's, it's, it's not a head-based decision. You didn't say, well, how should I, what's my niche? How do I get into this, this market? Right, right. I'm going to do something really unique this is who you are in the purest form. And I think that is one of the strongest messages here is that you've discovered your gift early, you're celebrating it, you're incorporating it, you're sharing your gift to the world. I mean, that is the perfect exemplification of, of sharing your gifts and sharing um, your, you know, who you are with the world. Hmm. Well, thank you. Um, Um, So, yeah, I mean, I think one of the first times it really got shown, especially like in terms of my brand and social media was one of my mentors actually encouraged me, shout out Oren, um, to uh, make a, I think he encouraged me to make a comedy video on uh, Facebook or make a comedy video and post it. And I just remember I posted this kind of spoof on coaches being on sales calls and you know, just being long and drawn out and them like forcing this person like you want to succeed, right? So sell your kids stroller and mm-hmm. all this funny stuff. And um, he, I posted the video and it got so much traction. And I got to really see how life was reflecting back to me. Like, dude, this is your genius. There's something to right. it. Um, so I've made comedy videos kind of combining comedy and spirituality. And it's been amazing. Mm-hmm. And I love just bringing it into my sessions. I think, I think comedy gives us permission to go where seriousness wouldn't otherwise. Well said. 
So when we can, I want to say like charm our way into some of these areas that the collective doesn't let us touch as much. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll get to extract a lot of wisdom and gold that wouldn't otherwise be mined. And with clients, it's great because I, I can show them the, just what they're doing in a funny way. I can, sometimes I'll, I'll be them. Sometimes I'll sort of act them out and just sh- reflect them back to themselves so they can just laugh and be like, oh yeah, that's actually silly. If you can look at a belief and see that it's ridiculous, it's so easy to separate yourself from it. Okay. If you can laugh at a belief and animate a belief, like, um, like I'm not good enough. Oh my God. I am. And you know, you act it out and you draw it out. You get to really create more space and separation to see like, Oh wow, that's actually not my true self mm-hmm. or just poking fun at something. It can break someone's pattern. It can break someone's, uh, seriousness mind frame. And you poke something, you, you, in, you input a joke and then they start to laugh and then they're, they're more open. So, mm-hmm. Part of what it is is opening people more to themselves and to fun, to connection. I don't think spirituality has to be so serious where we wear these right white robes all the time and we're meditating 48 hours a day. And um, exactly. yeah, I, I think we're, I think we're past that point because yeah. any, any part of ourselves that gets repressed, it, it ends up turning into our, part of our personality anyways, just in a more shadow type way. So right. like, let's just let's let our freak flags fly and let's just get it all out there. Right. I love that approach. So brilliant. And speaking of, are you, uh, would you be up for doing like a little example or a little ad lib of your comedy or at the end of the show, do you want to just give people a link to your Instagram or Facebook? Um, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but you're so. Oh, you already put me on the spot. <laughs> I'm giving you the option. The choice is yours, Kyle. As you know, you are the creator of your reality. So I'm giving you the choice oh, to whether or not you want to do this. You're just so awesome at impromptu. I think that's another one of your huge talents. I mean, I remember when, when we were talking on Saturday, actually just to all right. of your viewers and listeners, I connected with Kyle for the first time on Saturday through a common friend slash business manager, someone I'm really close to. And I was in New York for the weekend and he messaged and said, um, you should meet up with this guy, Kyle. He just moved there and made the connection. We were, we chatted at dinner and we were talking about a few things. And I remember just one of the concepts we chatted about and he just like took it and ran with it and just put this like amazing, amazing comedy skit around it. And I don't know if it was inspired from that conversation, but it was certainly linked in and he's just mm. so naturally gifted. It's just, it's just awe inspiring to watch you create oh. such brilliant material in just at warp speed. So um, if you want to share a little bit about one of your comedies, it's great. If not, um, no worries. We can just well, move right along. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. That means a lot. Um, Welcome. <clears throat> yeah. What was, what was one that I did? Hmm. I'm trying to think of a good one. Um, okay. Maybe we continue and maybe I'll, sure. I'll, I'll have something come to mind. Sure. I love the one that you did about the soul versus ego. Cause that's just, you know, that was, that was really, I just thought that was really, really kind of fun, but um, yeah. Yeah. Soul versus ego. I mean, that's, it, it's, it's just hilarious. Some of the things that are, our ego will tell us like, like what are some examples of things that are just the ego tells us that are just pure silliness. Right. Like, that would be a good one. Like our soul will say something like, dude, book that trick, book, book that trip to Greece. It's, it's time for you to go. Let's do it. And they're like, yeah, well, I'm saving up for this timeshare in Hawaii. And I don't think I should do it right now. And your soul's like, dude, you'll be able to buy an entire house in Hawaii if you take this trip. And you're like, nah, but there's an office party on Friday and, you know, they have really good cookies. And it's just kind of this this back and forth. Right. And it's ridiculous some of the times what our ego will, will say to get us to stay. And yeah, the more I think we can just see it as ridiculous, the easier it is to create space to to move into it. Right. It's easy for you to see kind of as you're looking at it, taking that 10,000 foot look at someone's situation. What is the ego? What is the soul? But how do we, and what's coming from our soul, but how do you coach people to, you know, I know it's, it's hard sometimes to discern what is coming from the ego, what is coming from the soul and how do you coach people to put those in 
silos or at least assign those to categories so that they can start to discern, okay, yeah. yes, this is coming from my soul and my spirit, and this is my ego, and this is what I need to learn to work through and kind of peel back the layers. So how do you help people make that that determination? Because I know that can be really challenging sometimes to, mm. to know where that's coming from. Right. I, I like to get people present to what their truth feels like. So I'll give an example. Uh, let's say I have a client who feels, who is a quote unquote perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I'll have her do maybe is I'll have her say out loud, I'm a perfectionist. Just see how that feels. And then I'll say, I'll say, I just feel really scared. And you can even feel the difference right now, the level of truth and vulnerability that's there. And they'll say that out loud. I'm like, do you feel the difference? Do you feel how you're not actually a perfectionist? How you're actually just really scared? And that's okay. And let's start from there. Because that's already starting with like four layers of the onion already peeled. Right, right. And um, sometimes when I'm in session with people, I'll be like, ask your intuition or ask your spirit. And they'll get an answer. Sometimes they'll be afraid to act on the answer. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes we're so clear that it's so scary so we create all these fences and barriers to mm -hmm. stop us from moving forward with that clarity because that means, um, quote, unquote, death to who we were. Right. And the good thing about death in this case is there's an even more powerful rebirth that comes That's and right. more of our true self gets to emerge. So I would say that's a way when you feel like you're just a perfectionist or you feel like this is just the way that I am or you feel like. When we say blanket statements like that, it can be very, <laughs> we're like crystallizing an illusion. Mm -hmm. And I would say get more present to, even just as an experiment, just try saying I'm really scared and just see how that feels. Because that level of honesty and vulnerability will take you deeper into your potential and take you deeper into more of who you really are and more of what you actually want. One of the things that's, that's, I totally agree. Um, one of the things I wanted to, to go back to was, you know, you talked about people are scared to kind of to take that next step because it means death of the kind of the ego based, you know, right. who they are. But um, what do you, and I know it can be scary. I know it's, there's, there's lots of, lots of things going on when, you know, you're talking about growth and transformation and your entire world could be up for redesign, including yeah. The way that you live, you know, how you live, the people, how you spend your time, the decisions you make, the people you mm -hmm. spend your time with. And that can be scary. I know that it's natural for people to be, you know, to feel pulled back to comfort and familiarity and what they totally. do. And the just living life in autopilot sometimes can be can be a little easier, right? Just kind of going through the motions. It's not where the the lifelong fulfillment is, but sure. it's what we know and it's what we've we're accustomed to. We don't realize they're old programming, you know, it's old programming that are being run. But what do you say to people who are scared, who are scared of making these changes and they're stepping into a completely unknown place? How do you, what do you say to people? How do you help them overcome their fears? How do you mm -hmm. allay some of their concerns? Mm -hmm. What types of hope or quote unquote promises do you make them about what they're going to be stepping into? Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a funny thing that I've said before, where I'll say something along the lines of, I don't know if I've said this specifically to a client, but I could totally see myself if I haven't. Um, like you're going to, you're going to have to learn these lessons at some point. You're either going to do it in this form or you're going to reincarnate as like a freaking cactus or something and you can't move and you still got to learn the same lessons <laughs> or you're going to reincarnate as like a squirrel and there's the lessons are still going to be there. So it's like, right. if not now, then when? And I mean, the good thing is we have infinite eternal time. Nice. So it's like, take as long as you want. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise you to, you know, wait 40 more years, but also, you know, no, no pressure in a sense. Right. Right. It's, their um, right. it's their journey. And just also showing them, giving them really present to like, you'll never actually like everything you want is on that side. And I know it doesn't feel like that. And from, and I'm not saying I still have my own, you know, jumps, but I've jumped enough to know that 
every single time I trust I'm safe and things actually are way better because I'm jump. what I'm jumping into is myself, more of myself, more of my expression, more of who I truly am. And when you jump into more of yourself, only great things can happen. And when I say great, I don't actually mean everything's going to be rainbows and fairies and, you know, unicorn dust, but it's, it's getting in touch with more of yourself. And maybe that means losing certain friends. Maybe that means um, disconnecting with people. Maybe that means moving to a totally different place. But if things don't stick around the same when you're being more of your true self, are they actually true to you? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, speaking of, I want to go back to jump. Um, I know that you made jump. a... <laughs> You made a rather monumental, huge leap recently um, from the, Kyle just moved from the West Coast to the East Coast. And this is a perfect example of him trusting his intuition and trusting what his spirit guides told him. So I'd love for you to explain about how that came about, about that experience, because that's just complete trust. That in my, is from my vantage point is just complete, turning it over to the universe and just following where your spirit is leading you. So if I'd love yeah. to share with everyone um, how you made that, how you made that jump. Cool. Yeah. I never told you about the story. I don't think where I, I moved, I traveled for three months with like no money. And oh. that was another, that was another leap of faith story, but um, I was started out with no money and I just left and everything fell into place, but it was, it was a freaking scary journey. Um, and with New York. So I was living in, I was living in San Diego at the time and I was there for a little bit and was there for about a month and a half. Um, I'm from LA and my time in San Diego was kind of running out. I mean, I could have extended it and stayed somewhere perhaps, but I was like, where do I want to go next? And LA didn't feel right. And San Diego just felt too slow for this next chapter in my life. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right. And then New York dropped in. And it was funny because first my friend was called to go to New York. And I hadn't even realized at the time that that was also where I was being called. And then the signs just were all up in my face, and okay. way too much in my face. So, such as, yeah, such as like I'll, I'll click someone's profile randomly and it'll be like New York or I'll, I'll go behind a license plate that says like, I don't know if it was exactly this, but like NY to CA and wow. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. They don't, they don't play around wild. with me. <laughs> <laughs> they put it up in my face. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah. And then basically I was still kind of oscillating a little bit and then I just, I knew it was going to happen. I, I leapt, everything worked out. Got to hang out with you, drank way too much coffee, and <laughs> yeah, now I'm here, and it's been a it's been a beautiful, amazing, magical journey that has has really transformed my life and given me an even deeper trust in life. Mm -hmm. um, which you, is, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, which is beautiful. It really is. Um, it really is beautiful. Did you have any fears? I mean, did you just kind of up and yeah. move and say, this is where my spirit is taking me? Or did you have any underlying fears? And if so, how did you work through those so that you could still follow the path that your spirit wanted you to follow? Yeah. Um, I did have fears. I had fears of leaving my family, my friends. Mm, what if I end up homeless and all my money's gone? Um, what else? Yeah, I definitely like what was serious, but there was moments of catastrophizing, even just like in little ways. And yeah, I mean, I was aware of them. I felt them and then kind of everything just lined up and I was like, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't, there wasn't a big, oh my God, this is the scariest thing ever type feeling. It was just trust and just trusting. Mm hmm and in the moments where I was afraid to trust, still 
that that greater self and and moving from that space do you have any particular um, modalities or techniques that you use or self-talk to coach yourself through the fears because i know fears can be super powerful and super stifling for a number of different people and myself included i mean i've I encounter, encountered them in the past and i still they still creep in from time to time and how do you transmute your fears you, what techniques techniques do you use to transmute your fears to fuel your mission hmm. i mean is it self-talk is it you know do you have a particular just in general to, just in general yeah do you, how do you coach yourself through hmm. fears um it, it really depends uh, it, it's not um it's, it's not like really a modality thing as much as Sometimes it might just be like, I'm really afraid and I'll ask spirit, I'll ask source or I'll ask a guide of mine and I'll get an answer. And I'm like, oh, that, that was really amazing. Um, another thing is maybe I'll call a friend and I'll share with them my fear and they'll support me. Um, or like have a call with a mentor and then they'll support me. Or, um, geez. Yeah, some of it is just trust, like leaning more towards the expansion and one of my best friends said something that I really liked. It's like um, going towards higher self releases lower self problems. So when we go towards our expansion, naturally everything that wants to surface will surface. We don't need to like excavate everything and spend all of our time here because sometimes that could be a distraction to going towards here because all the beliefs, all, all our BS is naturally going to come up when we go towards our expansion. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I would say those have been some big ones. Meditation, mm -hmm. going for a walk, um, slowing down. And I also just have so much evidence in my life of it's all good when you trust. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Here's a good one. Being okay with the worst case scenario. Okay. Like, okay, let's say, let's say ipso facto I end up homeless in New York. Is that okay? That's fine. What, what's the worst case that would happen? Oh, I'd fly back. Cool. Okay, yeah. So getting okay with... What's the worst thing that could happen and fully accepting it? Mm -hmm. cool, cool. I'm about to go on this date. What if they reject me? Okay. What if that's okay. And when you're okay with either, um, with either outcome, it can take you out of being so polarized and being so, uh, fear driven or fear inspired. Cause you're just more in a state of acceptance and surrender. And when you're in that state, you're so much more, it's hard to, it's hard to disturb someone's peace who's not afraid to lose. Right. It's so true. And, and I feel like even with, let's say money, it's like if you get money and you're so afraid of it, and you're so afraid to hold on to it, mm -hmm. then you're going to throw it away. You're going to overspend. You're going to do something else. Or if, um, if you feel like money is going to wreak havoc in your life, you're going to avoid it like the plague. But when you're okay with money and you're okay without money, like that's such a powerful space right. to be in at the deepest level to know that your safety doesn't come from anything besides who you truly are. Right. right. I, had a client, I had a client, she was making more money and I was like, do you see, because she was, she was holding on she was like, well, what if I let go of the money and da, 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 da. And I'm like, and at another point she was making like $1,500 a month but she felt way more happy, way more aligned. And I'm not correlating that less money equals happy. What I'm correlating is I'm like, do you see how you actually aren't safe? You don't feel safe within yourself and you have more money. And then she got to see that. And that's an important distinction. So long, long answer, but yeah, take, take time to get okay with the worst case scenario. So then you're not spending your whole time avoiding it. Right. I totally agree. Um, I've spent time doing that as well in my journey. And I also, one of my governing tenets that I operate under which I operate is I'm not attached to outcomes. And like you were saying, like, what if I, you know, what if this happens? It's okay. Regardless of what happens, it's okay. And not only is it okay to detach from outcomes, but that's a critical step in the process, in the process of manifesting what's in our highest good is detaching from outcomes. You know, I say all the time, you know, someone will say to me, well, don't you really want this to happen? Or what are you doing to make this happen? And I'm like, well, 
that's forcing it. That is controlling. That's right. forcing it. I'm going to be creating resistance. So I say it all the time and it's because I'm in a space of truly a, a true alignment, being at peace with who I am and where I am. You know, I'm not attached to outcomes or time frames. I say it all yes. the time. I'm just kind of flow with where life takes me. And regardless of what happens, I know, like you said, it will be okay. Any, yes. any future outcome will be okay. It may not be what we envisioned. Um, we may be in a different space, but even if it's a challenging scenario, it is rich in growth opportunities and rich in expansion. And yeah. that's where we want to be. So, um, so yeah, I think I, I agree. I think that detaching and, you know, detaching from outcomes is a huge mm -hmm. step in the process. Yeah. And it's surrendering and moving from inspiration after that. Mm -hmm. So when I surrender and I'm okay with any outcome, it's now, where do I want to go? Where would I love to go? And then moving from that space of inspiration, now that you're at more of a, uh, an unpolarized, uncharged field where it's kind of a blank canvas for you to create on. Now, what do I want to create now? How do I want to show up? Mm -hmm. So then there's less, less friction and tension in your being. So what would you say, where I guess I'd love to go next is kind of some um, words of wisdom to our listeners and viewers. Let's say someone saying, I'm really wanting to connect to my higher self, explore mm -hmm. my spiritual side, you know, what can I do? I feel like I'm, you know, I, I'm living a life that I've only, you know, the type of life I've only ever known. How do I make the shift or how do I begin to make the right. shift? It's obviously a lifelong journey. We're all still learning and growing every single day, but what are some basic actionable items that you can give people to incorporate into their life on a daily, weekly, monthly basis that will help them take steps towards connecting to their higher self? Well, Pam, for just five easy payments of <laughs> So no pressure, no pressure, right. <laughs> no pressure, but your divinity does lie in paying other people money. I'm kidding. So I know, see, there's the humor, everyone. See, I told you he's really, really good with ad lib, really good with humor. <laughs> so anyways, what are some so, what are things you can, the people can start doing? Meditation's big. Meditation is big. So I would, I would spend time in meditation and even just contemplating like, who are you really? And another thing would be seeing, okay, cool. So if you can, if you can witness your thoughts, who's the one witnessing your thoughts? And then even getting into that space of, Oh wow, I'm actually not my thoughts. I'm actually not these things and scenarios that are in my head. And it's kind of crazy how, we have all these crazy scenarios that are in our head. Like she's going to dump me and then she's going to go to Mexico with this guy. And then she's going to get married. And then she's going to marry my best friend. Then she's going to cheat on the guy that she married with one of my other best friends. And it literally all happened on the couch in like a 10 second span of time. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I can't date her if she's vegan. Cause Right. She's not vegan. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's that catastrophizing. It's like right, the, right. Um, another thing is like, like, what are you getting out of it? Like, what are you getting out of running some of these stories? So, an example would be maybe you're getting, uh, you're staying in your comfort zone, and you're getting this sense of, of. Let's take a look at a codependent relationship. I'm getting a sense of security. It's really unstable. Like it's, it's like um it's like a bridge that blind construction workers made I'm trying to walk on that bridge. Great analogy. And it is extremely scary to walk on, but I'm like, I'm kind of getting there. It gets really wobbly, but so just even looking at, okay, well, I'm getting a sense of safety and security, but also you, you, you've given that person so much power that it takes one moment for them to pull back for everything to freak you out. And that for me indicates, okay, well, that's pretty codependent. You, you lost, you, you've given a lot of your power away. So then another thing like meditation and, and following what you love, following what you love to do can lead you back to, Oh, I'm the source of all of this though. Mm -hmm. So I can't actually lose who I truly am. Right. I can't, I can't actually lose love because I am love. Mm -hmm. And that's a really deep uh, revelation. If you, if you really think about it, 
you can't lose what you are. Right. And yeah, I would say follow your excitement, follow, do things that inspire you, hang out with people that inspire you. Um, you know, if you feel called to invest in a mentor or someone that you would love to learn from, do that. And um, yeah, just as much as you can nurture that spark inside you that, Mm -hmm. that wants you to just have the best in life. Yeah. I love that. Um, We've got a few more minutes before we wrap up, but I just wanted to ask you, just turn it over to you. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our viewers and listeners, any other words of wisdom, any other um, examples from your life that you'd be willing to, um, to share, to exemplify some of the spiritual principles that we've talked about, Um, Mm -hmm. any words of encouragement to people who are starting off on their journey, anything at all. So I'll just give you a few minutes to just kind of ad lib and just, um, you know, and just impart your wisdom. All right. Well, I'll take this as a comedy set (laughs) now. However you want to do it. (laughs) So I also want to, I also want to preface because I didn't really share any of my story here just so I don't, I basically just gave a bunch of spiritual wisdom and was saying, yeah, do this and do that. I I also want to say for people starting out on the journey, I started out, you know, when I was about 13, 14, my, Family and I lived in homeless shelters when I was around uh, a teenager. I've experienced sexual experiences that ended up being traumatic for me. I've, I've experienced quite a bit in my life and a lot of ranges of experiences from, gosh, like working for different mentors and kind of doing what I could to be in these rooms and places and spaces. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you one to, I would just say up your willingness, up your willingness to truly be who you are, up your willingness to truly express what's on your heart. Um, Don't take shit too seriously. It's, it's not so serious. Right. Um, Have fun, laugh. Hmm. And just trust yourself. If, the, if, if people just trusted themselves, life would get figured out so much faster. Right. Not that we can ever actually figure out what the hell is going on on this spinning rock, but they would sort things out. And life always wants us to auto-correct to alignment. So just noticing where life is just trying to spell check us and auto-correct us mm-hmm. and following those nudges. Right. Following yeah. nudges, right. And I know you said, we t- you talked earlier about, you know, feeling, paying attention to how you feel. That is something that I've learned to anchor on um, yes. all the time. How does this make me feel? So your body knows. I mean, your body reacts at all levels um, to things, you know, whether they're favorable or unfavorable for our well-being, for, our, you know, for our spirit. And right. when you start to ask yourself, you know, how do I feel several times a day in various situations, I found that is one of the the best mechanisms to really connecting to where, what, what is, what resonates with your spirit and what doesn't. And I think um, that's, I know that's been huge for me is just tuning into how does this make me feel? And I, cause I I know for myself, even as I look back on certain decisions I made in my life, you know, a couple of years ago, decades ago, whatever, you know, how does this make me feel? I didn't even realize I was so disconnected with, I didn't even realize that, that I should have been checking in. And I said, oh, well, that's why that didn't work out. I knew it. I felt it at the time. I kind of knew it on a, kind of on a subconscious level, but my conscious mind used logic and reason and analysis and data. And I convinced myself to go down one path, but I just didn't feel right. And I didn't realize that I needed, I should have been trusting my intuition. I didn't realize how much of a guiding force our intuition could be. Yeah, one of my best friends says intuition always includes logic, but logic doesn't always include intuition. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Love that. And the plan is contained within going into the unknown. And we develop a like a PhD in trust when we move into it. And that trust actually helps us in our leadership to help us execute the plan. And to go back onto what you said about how things make you feel, perfect example, I felt not good when you kept criticizing me about my coffee drinking habits <laughs> and I don't think it was necessarily criticizing they were observations <laughs> I, I, I call I it observations. Observations. <laughs> I 
felt I felt terrible after that. And I changed my ways and I stopped drinking <laughs> coffee and life's just life's just been downhill. And no, your vibration skyrocketed, right? Since you stopped drinking coffee and switched to tea, right? I can sense it. I can sense that your vibration is a lot higher. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know if that's just you trying to fulfill a self fulfilling prophecy, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so what flavor tea are you drinking right now? Um I'm actually drinking mushroom tea. Oh, okay. Chaga mushroom. Yep. Okay. I've not tried that one, but I do. I keep a variety of, of teas handy and, yeah. and my, it's my go-to. Tastes kind of like dirt ground. So oh, awesome. yeah, if you're into Enjoy. that kind of stuff, thank you. Yeah, enjoy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think we're just about wrapped up here. If, unless there's anything else that you would like to share. Is there? Um, I mean, if any of you guys want to connect, um, I'm happy to connect and yeah, I'd be happy to offer you people if they ever want to do a 30 minute session with me. I'd, yeah. I'd love to do that. Sure. And that actually was one of my specific questions as we close up. I mean, first of all, I want to thank you. I'm super grateful that you carved this time out of your day to spend with me. And no problem. I will um, take the liberty of saying that I know our, our listeners and, and viewers are grateful for your presence here as well and for you sharing your infinite wisdom and knowledge with us. Um, I would love to have you tell people how they can connect with you if they're interested in learning more about you, taking a look at your comedy, um, booking a session, etc. So if they so choose, how can they connect with you? Yeah. Um, so if you want to, just go ahead and go to Kyle Lipton on Facebook. And then I have an Instagram, which is Kyle Lipton, K-Y-L-E-L-I-P-T-O-N. So I push a lot of my stuff there, a lot of my content there. And um, yeah, holler at me if you'd like to do a session and awesome. or just say hi and tell me what you liked about the podcast. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And I'd like to thank all of our listeners and viewers for joining us today. Remember to visit liveauthentically.today slash FB to join our life or to join our Live Authentically community. Um, and also stay tuned for more details on my book launch, which will be in early 2020. Thanks again, Kyle, and thank you everyone, and have a great day.